Decoding the First Beast of Revelation 13 This is the third of three videos unmasking the first beast of Revelation 13. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel and click on the notification button so that you don't miss any of my future videos. This Bible prophecy predicts 2,500 years of history in advance right down to our present day. If you want to know what's going to happen to those of us who are living in these end times, stay tuned. My pledge to you will be using the Bible to interpret itself. No guesswork required. What does the Bible tell us about this beast? Be sure to view my first two videos which deal with verses 1 through 3 in greater depth. But for now, let me summarize. Revelation 13, 1 through 3 reads, And I saw a beast rising up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and on his horns ten crowns, and on his heads a blasphemous name. Now the beast which I saw was like a leopard. His feet were like the feet of a bear, and his mouth like the mouth of a lion. The dragon gave him his power, his throne, and great authority. And I saw one of his heads as if it had been mortally wounded, and his deadly wound was healed. And all the world marveled and followed the beast, and they worshipped the dragon who gave authority to the beast, and they worshipped the beast. If you're one of my channel subscribers, you already recognize this beast. Where have we seen him before? The prophet Daniel was shown these beasts approximately 500 years before the birth of Jesus. Let's take a look. Daniel 7, 2 reads, I saw in my vision by night four great beasts came up from the sea, each different from the other. The first was like a lion, the second like a bear, and there was another like a leopard, which had on its back four wings of a bird. The beast also had four heads. The fourth beast was dreadful and terrible, exceedingly strong. It had huge iron teeth. It was different from all the beasts that were before it, and it had ten horns. I was considering the horns, and there was another horn, a little one, coming up among them. And there in this horn were eyes like the eyes of a man, and a mouth speaking pompous words. The beasts are one and the same. The beasts in both prophecies have seven heads among them. Both mention ten horns, and the beasts are blasphemous. What are these beasts? Luckily, we don't have to guess. Daniel was shown the names of the first three kingdoms that were represented by these animals. The prophecy of Daniel chapter 2 is the key to understanding the beasts of Daniel 7 and of Revelation 13 and 17. Daniel 2.37 tells us that the first kingdom is Babylon. In Daniel 5.28, we learn that Babylon fell to Medo-Persia. Daniel 10.20 tells us that the third king is Greece, which was divided into four sections, explaining why the leopard-like beast had four heads. And the fourth dreadful beast is explained in Daniel 11.20, where we read of an imposer of taxes. This refers to Caesar Augustus, the first Caesar to rule the imperial Roman Empire. But can we be sure that the beasts are kingdoms and not something more sinister? Once again, the Bible gives us the answer. Daniel 7.17 reads, Those great beasts which are four are four kings which arise out of the earth. And Daniel 7.23 reads, The fourth beast shall be a fourth kingdom on earth. We learn from these two verses that beasts represent kings and kingdoms. But what do the horns on the dreadful fourth beast represent? Daniel 7.24 reads, The ten horns are ten kings who shall arise from this kingdom. We know from history that Rome deteriorated into ten kingdoms. These kingdoms make up modern Europe. The first beast of Revelation 13 is a compilation of the four beasts of Daniel 7. Revelation 13 also tells us that one of the heads of this beast will be mortally wounded, but the wound will be healed and the whole world will worship this beast. What else does the Bible reveal about this beast? Revelation 13, 5 through 8 reads, And he was given a mouth, speaking great things and blasphemies, and he was given authority to continue for 42 months. 
Then he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name, his tabernacle, and those who dwell in heaven. It was granted to him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And authority was given him over every tribe, tongue, and nation. All who dwell on the earth will worship him, whose names have not been written in the book of life. Revelation 13 tells us a lot about the first beast. Let's look closely at each point, using the Bible to interpret itself. Point number one, the beast arose out of the sea. The angel tells the prophet John that the sea symbolizes a densely populated area. Revelation 17, 15 reads, Then he said to me, The waters which you saw, where the harlot sits, are peoples, multitudes, nations, and tongues. In this passage, we learn that the first beast arises out of a densely populated area. This beast arose out of the old world, densely populated and civilized Europe. Point number two. It has seven heads, ten horns, and ten crowns. Revelation 17.12 reads, The ten horns which you saw are ten kings. The Bible teaches us that horns represent kings or kingdoms. The crowns symbolize royalty. Point number three. It had a blasphemous name on its heads, and it speaks blasphemy against God and blasphemes his name, his tabernacle, and those who dwell in heaven. What is the biblical definition of blasphemy? Definition one, claiming the power to forgive sins. Mark 2, 6 through 11 reads, And some of the scribes were sitting there and reasoning in their hearts. Why does this man speak blasphemies like this? Who can forgive sins but God alone? In this story, we see the first definition of blasphemy, claiming the power to forgive sins. Definition 2, claiming to be God. In John 5.18, we read about another reason the Jews wanted to kill Jesus for blasphemy. Therefore, the Jews sought the more to kill him, because he not only had broken the Sabbath, but said also that God was his Father, making himself equal with God. The first beast of Revelation 13 claims to be able to forgive sins and claims to be God. In this way, the beast is blasphemous. In the following references, you will see that the papacy claims to be able to forgive sins and claims to be God. Reading from Ferrari's Ecclesiastical Dictionary. The Pope is of so great dignity and so exalted that he is not a mere man, but as it were God and the vicar of God. He is likewise the divine monarch and supreme emperor and king of kings, so that if it were possible that angels might err in the faith or might think contrary to the faith, they could be judged and excommunicated by the Pope. Quote from Bellarmine on the Authority of Councils, Volume 2. All names which in the scriptures are applied to Christ, by virtue of which it is established that he is over the church, all the same names are applied to the Pope. Reading from Father Enright. The Bible says, remember that thou keep holy the Sabbath day. The Catholic Church says, no, by my divine power, I abolish the Sabbath day and command you to keep holy the first day of the week. And lo, the entire civilized world bows down in reverent obedience to the command of the Holy Catholic Church. Quoting Dr. Johann E. Luther's Principal Adversary, 1533. There is no mention of the cessation of the Sabbath and the institution of Sunday in the Gospels or in Paul's writing, or in all the Bible. Therefore, this has taken place by the Apostolic Church, instituting it without Scripture. From Catholic World, 1894 The Church took the pagan philosophy and made it the buckler of faith against the heathen. She took the pagan Sunday and made it the Christian Sunday. There is in truth something royal, something kingly about the Son, making it a fitting emblem of Jesus, the Son of Justice. Hence, the church in these countries would seem to have said, Keep the old pagan name, it shall remain consecrated, sanctified. And thus, the pagan Sunday dedicated to Balder 
became the Christian Sunday sacred to Jesus. From St. Alphonsus Liguori The priest has the power of the keys or the power of delivering sinners from hell, of making them worthy of paradise, and of changing them from slaves of Satan into children of God. And God himself is obligated to abide by the judgment of his priests, and either not to pardon or to pardon. When St. Michael comes to a dying Christian who invokes his aid, the holy archangel can chase away the devils, but he cannot free his client from the chains till a priest comes to absolve him. Friends, which institution in the world today claims to be able to forgive sins and claims to be God? Point number four. The dragon gave him his power, his throne, and great authority. Who is the dragon? The prophet John was shown in vision that the dragon is Satan. Revelation 12.9 reads, So the great dragon was cast out, that serpent of old, called the devil and Satan, who deceives the whole world. He was cast to the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Revelation 13.3 tells us that Satan gives the first beast of Revelation 13 his power, his throne, and his great authority. What throne? Great authority over what? God gave Adam and Eve dominion over the earth when he created them. They were the rulers of the earth. See Genesis 1.26. Mankind forfeited that dominion to Satan when they distrusted their creator and chose instead to trust Satan. Jesus himself recognized the dominion of Satan. In his warning to the disciples of his approaching death, he mentioned Satan's rulership. John 14.30 reads, I will no longer talk much with you, for the ruler of this world is coming. Point number five. The people worship the dragon and the beast. The first beast has both political and religious powers. This beast is concerned with both civil power and worship. It is not just a church, and it is not just a kingdom with civil power. It's a combination of both civil and religious power. It involves worship. Point number six. It ruled for 42 prophetic months. What time period is meant by 42 months? Let's calculate the time period. One prophetic month is equal to 30 days. 42 months times 30 days equals 1260 days. A day in Bible prophecy equals one literal year. So the 1260 days allotted for the events in this vision are 1260 years. This is known as a day-year principle of prophetic time and is used in Ezekiel 4.6 which reads, You shall bear the iniquity of the house of Judah 40 days. I have laid on you a day for each year. Ezekiel was instructed by God that one day was representative of one literal year. The day-year principle is also taught in Numbers 14.34, which reads, According to the number of the days in which you spied out the land, forty days, for each day you shall bear your guilt one year, namely forty years. Moses here explains to the children of Israel that they will live in the desert for 40 years. Each year is represented by one day. Jesus uses the same day-year principle to prophesy that he would minister for three years and then he would be crucified. Luke 13.32 reads, And he said to them, Go tell that fox, Behold, I cast out demons and perform cures today and tomorrow, and the third day I shall be perfected. The 1260-day time prophecy is central to the prophecies in Daniel and Revelation. In fact, this time prophecy is so important that God referred to it seven times. The references include Daniel 7.25, Daniel 12.7, Revelation 11.2, Revelation 11.3, Revelation 12.6, Revelation 12.14, and Revelation 13.5. This time period is referred to in three different ways, as 42 months, time, times, and half a time, 
and as 1260 days. A closer look at the reference in Daniel 7.25 helps us identify the first beast of Revelation 13. Daniel 7.25 reads, He shall speak pompous words against the Most High, shall persecute the saints of the Most High, and shall intend to change times and law. Then the saints shall be given into his hand for a time, and times, and half a time. The Amplified Bible translates the word time to represent one year. Therefore, the period described as time, times, and half a time is equal to a three and a half prophetic year period. A prophetic year is 360 days long. Time equals 360 days. Times is two years or 720 days. Half a time equals one half year, or 180 days. Added together, this time period equals 1260 days. The first beast of Revelation 13 is going to persecute the saints for 1260 years. Daniel 7.25 uses the word Gentiles to identify the persecuting power. This persecuting power is also identified in the Bible as the Antichrist, the Little Horn, the First Beast of Revelation 13, and the Mother of Harlots of Revelation 17. All these different names refer to the same institution that persecuted the saints for 1260 years. Point number seven. The power of the first beast will be temporarily contained. Revelation 13, 2 reads, And I saw one of his heads as if it had been mortally wounded, and his deadly wound was healed. This verse tells us that a wound was inflicted on one of the heads of the first beast, and it looked as if it was a mortal or fatal wound. But the verse goes on to tell us that the deadly wound was healed. Has this mortal wound already been inflicted? When did the 1260-year time period begin? When did it end? We discover the answer when we study the little horn of Daniel 7. Daniel 7, 8 reads, I was considering the horns, and there was another horn, a little one coming up among them, before whom three of the first horns were plucked out by the roots. This Bible passage tells us that the little horn uprooted three kingdoms. We know from history that the Heruli, Ostrogoths, and Vandals were destroyed by 538 AD. This gives us a definite time frame for the rise of the little horn power. The little horn arises after the division of the Roman Empire, but before the destruction of the three horns. Western Rome deteriorated into ten nations after 476 AD, and the Heruli, Ostrogoths, and Vandals were destroyed by the year 538 AD. The 1260 year prophetic time period began in 538 AD when Roman general Belisarius took Rome back from the Ostrogoths. Pope Vigilus, the first pope of the Byzantine papacy, ascended the papal throne under Emperor Justinian and Roman general Belisarius. He was consecrated and enthroned on March 29, 537 AD. The 1260 year period ended in 1798 when French general Berthier under Napoleon deposed Pope Pius VI who was taken prisoner and transported to France. The Pope died one year later in Valence, France. From that time to this, no papal decree has been enforced. General Berthier's actions were a direct fulfillment of the prophecy of the deadly wound. The healing of the deadly wound has not yet occurred. We look for this fulfillment in the very near future. If the infliction of the deadly wound resulted in the Pope losing his power to enforce a papal decree, then the healing of the deadly wound will result in the papacy regaining the power of enforcement. Read Daniel 7 for more information on the 1260-day prophecy. Point number 8. He made war with the saints. The first beast of Revelation 13 made war with the saints in other words, persecuted God's people over a period of 1260 years. Following is a partial list of documented persecution that occurred. 
1098, Roman Catholic Crusaders massacre almost all of the inhabitants of the city of Antioch. 1099, Roman Catholic Crusaders massacre 70,000 Muslims and Jews when they capture Jerusalem. 1208 through 1226, the Albigensian Crusades occurred in southern France. Roman Catholic Crusaders slaughter approximately 20,000 citizens of Beziers, France on July 22, 1209. By the time the Roman Catholic armies finished their crusade, almost the entire population of southern France were exterminated. During the six centuries of papal inquisition that began in the 13th century, up to 50 million people were killed. 1481 through 1483, at the direction of the Roman Catholic inquisitors, Authorities burn at the stake at least 2,000 people at the beginning of the Spanish Inquisition, 1540 through 1570. During this 30-year period, Roman Catholic armies kill at least 900,000 Waldensian Christians, 1550 through 1560. Roman Catholic troops massacre at least 250,000 Dutch Protestants via torture, hanging, and burning. 1572, St. Bartholomew's Day Massacre occurred. French Roman Catholic soldiers begin killing Protestants in Paris on the night of August 24, 1572. The soldiers killed at least 10,000 Protestants during the first three days. At least 8,000 more Protestants were killed as the massacre spread to the countryside. 1618 through 1648. The Thirty Years' War. This bloody religious war is planned, instigated, and orchestrated by the Roman Catholic Jesuit Order in an attempt to exterminate all the Protestants in Europe. Many countries in Central Europe lost up to half of their population, 1641 through 1649. Eight years of Jesuit instigated Roman Catholic massacre of Irish Protestants claimed the lives of at least 100,000 Protestants. 1685. French Roman Catholic soldiers massacred approximately 500,000 French Protestant Huguenots on the orders of Roman Catholic King Louis XIV of France. Point number nine. Authority was given him over every tribe, tongue, and nation. All who dwell on the earth will worship him, whose names have not been written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Friends, this part of the prophecy has not yet been fulfilled, but I believe the fulfillment will occur in our generation, as I believe we are the last generation to live on the earth before the second coming of Jesus. This verse appears to point to a new world order, an order in which the whole world will be ruled by the first beast of Revelation 13. It is very important to understand who the first beast of Revelation 13 is, In my next video, we will study the second beast of Revelation 13, the image of the beast and the mark of the beast. Until next time, God bless you.